Hi and welcome to the Face Plant Beginner's Guide. I'm Matthias and today we'll go through the really core and foundation of the Face Plant scent. If you have any questions during this video, please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. So let's take the tour. Okay, so let's quickly go over the user interface of the Face Plant scent. First out, we have the Generators Zone. And that is where we add our sound generators. Make a click here and we can add analog, granular, noise sampler or a wavetable sound generator. We can also add different effects like distortion, a filter, and some routing and uh, output modules. Now, uh, Faceplant is a modular synthesizer, and that means that we can add modules and also move these uh, modules around to create really complex uh, sound generators. To the right of the generators, we have uh, three different effect lanes. And uh, you can think about the signal or the audio routing in Faceplant that we have first the generators, then the generated sound goes into the effects slots. And you can send these generators to uh, one or multiple of these uh, effect lanes. The effect section is basically your internal mixer within the Faceplant synth. At the bottom we have the modulators zone, and that is where we add different uh, modulators which can affect and sculpt our sound in various ways. And we can add shapes, audio modules, MIDI modules, and uh, utilities modules. And also group these for a better organization. And we will look at uh, some of these uh, while we start uh, designing our first sound. Above the modulators, we have some global settings for uh, the face plant scent. So we can set glide, global unison. We can set the polyphony for the face plant scent. Uh, pitch bend range, and to the right of the global settings for the generators, we have uh, the different mix settings for the effects. So we can mix and match these different uh, effect lanes. So let's begin by creating our. And then finally at the top we have uh, the final uh, section of uh, the face plant, which is uh, the macros. Where you can create uh, custom uh, macros to control the sounds in various ways, so that you can make a more expressive performance with the mod wheel and the different knobs and controllers of your MIDI controller. And if you'd like to purchase the Faceplant synth, you can actually make use of my affiliate link in the description. And that way you also support my work here on YouTube, so I can make more of these fun and inspiring tutorials for you. So let's begin creating our first sound in the Faceplant synth. We we'll begin going to the generators to create a sound generator. Let's begin creating an analog sound generator. And with the analog sound generator we have different waveforms. First out we have the sawtooth, which is a rich sound. Then we have the square wave, which is also a quite thick but a bit hollow sound. Then we have the triangle. The triangle is really great for creating like flute sounds. And then finally, the sine wave, which is the purest of sound waves. At the lower right side in my music application Bitbig Studio, I have an equalizer set up with a spectrum analyzer. So that we can actually see the sound that we're creating. Having a spectrum analyzer while you create your sounds is a really helpful tool, because you can see if you have too much bass or too much high end and really see how the sound is sculpted. Now a single cycle waveform by itself sounds quite static. Nothing really happens to the sound, it's like a, just a, a pure sound coming through. And that is uh, where the modulators effects uh, and filters comes to play. And when we add an oscillator in Faceplant, like this analog oscillator, it also adds an envelope. By default the envelope controls the amplitude of our uh, oscillator, in this case the analog oscillator. The envelope has four parameters, attack, decay, sustain and release, often called ADSR. And these control the amplitude of the sound, or the volume of the sound. So if we increase the attack, we get a slower attack to the sound. And a short attack, we get this really snappy attack. And if we increase the release, we get a longer release on the sound. And these are like the most basic controls to control the behavior of the sound. So we can create a pad. 
if we increase the attack and increase the release. And if you want to make a plug sound, just uh, make a very short attack and a short release. And uh, probably also de decrease the sustain and also the decay. And here we can now see how the sound will behave in the volume. It will be a very snappy attack and then a very fast decay. So that is basically how you, uh, at the core, create a pad sound and a pluck sound. Okay, so let's uh, increase the uh, attack, uh, decay and release slightly again and add a little bit of sustain. Okay, so let's now continue and sculpt this sound by adding a filter to filter out some of the higher frequencies and make this uh, more of a mellow kind of sound. And uh, of course we can add a filter down below here, but we actually want to have the filter between the sound generator and the envelope. So let's hover above these two modules, make a click where we get this blue dotted line and add the filter. And you can hear we instantly get a more mellow kind of sound. The filter is controlled via the cutoff and the cue. The cutoff is uh, the point uh, of uh, cut, as in cutoff. So if we drag it all the way up, uh, all the sound will be coming through. But as we decrease this, uh, less of the high frequency will come through, which we can see here and also on the spectrum analyzer. So now we have mostly uh, the fundamental coming through the lowest note, the lowest pitch. And as we open the filter, you get more high frequency coming through. Right, so let's begin setting this quite low. And then we will add some kind of a control to control how the cutoff behaves. Because we want it to begin letting all the sound through. And then we want this uh, cutoff to decrease, to become mellow. To do that, we need to add a modulator. So let's click below here and add an envelope. And this envelope behaves the same as the envelope to our sound generator. By itself, this uh, modulator doesn't do anything yet. It just sits here idly free. It responds to our key presses, as we can see. As uh, I press a key, we get this uh, envelope happening. And we can also see a blue dot moving on the shape. Now we need to attach this modulator to the cutoff. To do that, we press this little orange plus sign. And uh, you can see that we get a lot of these uh, orange pluses all over the interface of Faceplant. And uh, that means that we can attach this uh, envelope control to uh, all these other parameters in Faceplant. So let's attach this to the cutoff. We can also see this uh, little orange line, dotted line from the envelope to the control that we hover above. So let's hover above the cutoff and the drag, click and drag upwards to maybe 50%. So now you can see that the cutoff will follow the envelope shape. So there we basically have a, a quick bass sound. We're still in this uh, modular attaching phase since we can see all these pluses. To cancel the attachment phase of uh, the modulator, we just click anywhere on the interface. And uh, those uh, orange pluses disappear. So now we can control other stuff in, in the interface. Maybe increase the attack of this envelope. Make it a shorter release. Also on this envelope. We can also control the curve because now it's a quite a straight uh, line. We can change it to exponential. If we drag the line here, we can change the curvature or the curve. Now when we play snappy on the keyboard, we get the whole envelope playing through. But as we hold the key, 
the level of this envelope will stay at the sustained level, which is now set to 100%. That means that uh, the cutoff will also stay at the highest value, which isn't really what we want with this plug sound. So we need to decrease the sustain here. But then increase the decay. Now we can quickly make this sound even more complex with a simple setting here in the, the global settings for the generators. And that is to activate the global unison. You can hear that we instantly get a more full sound. And that is because the global unison adds copies of the oscillators. So if we press down a key, it actually makes four copies of this uh, same uh, oscillator sound. But it tunes them slightly, since we have a little bit of the tuning setting here. And the more you increase this, uh, the more out of tune the sound will, will become. Until it becomes <laughs> like unusable. But sometimes you need that. Let's decrease it so it's uh, more usable for us. And increase the spread. And uh, now the magic really happens. Because now Faceplant uh, spreads the four copies of this oscillator differently in the stereo spectrum, so we get a really wide sound. So I highly recommend that you experiment with the global unison setting. And there's also tons of different, uh, like you can change it to SAS2. Or set it to a fifth. The smooth sounds best for this particular sound. Now we can also activate something called glide. Let's activate glide and uh, increase the milliseconds here. And now you can see if we press two keys after each other. We get a glide between these different notes. Let's increase it so it's more audible. You can also set it to legato. To get a more smooth sound. So let's decrease that and set it to always again. So we have a little bit of glide. Right, so let's begin experimenting with some effects on this uh, simple plug sound. If you look at the output section of uh, this uh, signal generator group, we can see it's sent to lane 1. And if we click here, we can actually decide to send this to some other lane if we want, or send it directly to the master or sideband. But uh, let's uh, have it on lane 1, and that means that this signal generator will output its audio to the lane 1. Let's begin by adding some kind of delay. So let's use the dual delay. Decrease the mix, decrease, increase the feedback, and increase a little bit of crosstalk, and increase the ducking here. The dual delay effect the delays the sound differently in the left and right side speaker. So the left is set to 200 milliseconds and the right is set to 200 millisecond times 1.62. But uh, you probably want to set this to sync to your door tempo. So we suddenly have a quite nice like uh, pluck sound. Let's add some more effects. We can add a reverb after the delays. So let's uh, find the reverb. Increase the decay and decrease the mix a little bit so we don't get too much of reverb. Let's try this same sound, but with another waveform. That's the square wave. Let's try the triangle. You can hear it's much more muffled. And then the sine wave. 
Let's try the sawtooth, which is uh, the sharpest and most rich of these waveforms. Okay, so let's uh, finalize this sound by adding uh, some macro or uh, control so we can control this sound uh, and make it more expressive with maybe the mod wheel. So now we can attach this uh, mod wheel to uh, some parameter like we did with the envelope. Just uh, hover above the mod wheel parameter and press this orange plus. And uh, let's add this uh, to open up the filter. And also make it uh, increase the mix of the reverb. So we get more of the reverb and more of the, the delays. And maybe also increase uh, the release of these two envelopes. Now we'll start playing with the mod wheel all the way down and we'll successively increase the value. Now let's also add a second sound generator just to make the sound more rich. So let's press this free square down here and add uh, the wavetable oscillator. With a wavetable oscillator we can uh, scan through different uh, oscillators and uh, get uh, different sounds. If we begin with the first wave we will have a sine wave, then as we scan through this uh, wavetable we get different waveforms. A triangle, a sawtooth and finally to a square wave. But let's set this to a square wave and use the semitones to transpose this 12 semitones down an octave below our first sound. Let's set it to a minus 12. So that's the sound without any filtering on this second oscillator. So you can hear there's quite a difference if we use just a single oscillator and with this additional oscillator. We can also control the volume between these two if we just uh, drag down the gain here on this second one. Now if you want you can uh, set these to the same group, the same sound group, because now they are in different sound groups. But you can actually grab one of these uh, modules, the wavetable module, and drag it uh, up here below the analog oscillator and that means that now both these two oscillators will go through the same filter and then into the envelope and out through lane one of the effects. And now we can effectively get rid of this second group because we don't need it anymore because we have everything in the same group. Now you can also name groups in phase plant. So let's uh, call this synth plug. It's a very good practice to disable and enable these different devices while you experiment and design your sounds to hear how it changes with the, the new modules that you add and the more devices that you add. So now I think we have a quite a nice sound. So let's play something and play with a mod wheel. Okay, so that's a quick uh, brief overview of the basic functionality of uh, the phase plant synth. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions on uh, sound design with the phase plant. Thanks for watching today. My name is Matthias. Bye.